in this series of tutorials, we'll be projection mapping a house. In this tutorial, we will be making a guide to help us design video for our house projection mapping. We will be using free photogrammetry software, as well as Blender, which is a free 3D application, and After Effects. Before we start designing animated content to projection map on the house, we are going to need a reference guide of the building. We are going to create this guide by generating a 3D model from reference images. This technique is known as photogrammetry, and there are several free applications at our disposal to do this. Why are we doing it this way and not using a reference photo? Well, photos do not accurately represent the dimensions of a building. Lines that should be parallel are not because of perspective. Some lines should also be straight, but might appear curved because of the distortion from the camera's lens. In order to create a 3D photo scan of the house, we are going to use lots of photos taken from different angles. The photogrammetry software looks at all the photos and tries to identify distinctive features and markers. By comparing the location of markers across all the images, the software is able to reconstruct the scene in 3D. So the first step is to take lots of photos of your house from lots of different angles. So you can see I stuck some black stickers on the house to give the software a helping hand when it's trying to identify features, particularly since the house I'm using has large featured sections of white that don't have a lot of distinctive detail. This was something I chose to do to be safe, but it's not necessary to get adequate results, especially if your house has more detail than this one. Use a DSLR camera if you have one to take these images. There are several advantages to using a DSLR camera, one of which is that information about the camera and the lens, as well as the camera settings used to take the photo, are stored in the image, which helps the software. Having said that, I did a test run using images taken on an iPhone, and I still got good enough results. Higher resolution images will produce better results. Whatever camera you use, you want to set it to manual so the exposure and other settings remain the same in each photo. If you are using a smartphone, you might need to download an app to give you manual control over your camera. You don't want any blurriness in the photo and you also shouldn't have any depth of field. By that I mean the background and foreground shouldn't be blurred. I encountered a couple of unavoidable issues on the day I took these photos. The first was that it was very windy, so these plants at the edges are blowing around and will confuse the software. Another thing was the reflections in the windows, which change as I move around the house. There were originally lots of plants in pots at the front of the house, which were swaying in the wind, so I moved those out of the way and I also tied back some branches that were getting in front of the camera. Aim to gather a minimum of 20 to 30 images. I will be using Meshroom, which is free. It can be used on Windows or Linux and requires an NVIDIA GPU. I've got some good results from it. If you are on PC or Linux but don't have an NVIDIA GPU, there are other free options available like 3DF Zephyr, which I also used with good results. If you are on a Mac, you can try Regard 3D. These options are all free and I'll put the links to all of them down below in the description. The workflow in Meshroom is really straightforward. Drag all your images here. Review them and delete any that are blurry or low quality if you haven't already. This string of nodes shows all the steps in the pipeline that Meshroom is going to use. You can leave these exactly as they are. I'm going to make one small change. I'm going to go inside the text string node and change the unwrap method from basic to LSCM, which will produce one texture file and not multiple files. If you find you are getting very large, dense models out of this process that your machine is struggling to handle, you can add a mesh decimate node between the mesh filtering and texturing nodes and change the max vertices to something like 100,000. This will produce a simpler, lower polygon mesh. But as I said, you can leave this exactly as it is out of the box. We really don't need a good quality result from this process. This isn't a tutorial on how to get amazing photo scans. 
As you'll see, we're going to use the model as a base when we trace out a more accurate guide later. Hit start. The software will probably ask you to save the project somewhere, so go ahead and do that. Let the process run. It can take a while, particularly if you are using lots of high resolution images, so step away, have a coffee and come back in half an hour or so. The process has completed and over here we can see a point cloud of our reconstructed scene. It's upside down, but that's okay. Hit load model to create a surface with your points. This looks pretty good, so I'm happy to move on to the next stage, which is loading the model into Blender, which is a free application for working in 3D. This is what a new scene in Blender looks like. Delete this cube. Now we need to import the model I just made by going to File, Import, Wavefront OBJ. I need to locate my Meshroom project folder and look inside this Meshroom cache. I will find the textured model inside texturing and here we see our OBJ model and its associated material. I carried out a test and I know these are the right settings for me over here on the right. You might need to experiment with these options. Import the OBJ. You may need to wait a few moments for it to load. Right now we are viewing the model without its material. To see our material, turn on Material Preview Mode. This might also take a while to load up. In terms of navigating around the viewport, I'm using a mouse and its middle mouse button to tumble around, Shift middle mouse button to pan, and Control middle mouse to dolly in and out. We want to adjust the orientation of the model so that it lines up with the X, Y and Z axes. To make this easier, I want to centre the pivot point of the model and move it to the origin. I can do that by selecting it, right clicking and going to Set Origin and choosing Geometry to Origin. Right now I'm viewing the model with a perspective camera. Instead, I want to view it through an orthographic camera which does not have perspective to help me line up the model with the axes. Go to View, Viewport, and select Front Camera. Select the Move tool, and grab and drag the handles to move the model up onto the ground plane. Now select the Rotate tool and rotate the model until it is more aligned with the X, Y and Z axes. I'm going to quickly clean up some of this unnecessary geometry around the main house. Enter Edit Mode and click away from your model to deselect all the vertices. Use Face Select Mode, Toggle X-Ray Mode, Using a Select Box I can select these faces around the house that I don't need. If I hold Shift I can keep adding to my selection. Then I can delete the faces. Go back into Object Mode. Now view your model through the right camera. Use the Rotate tool again and straighten up your model. Delete more unwanted geometry if necessary. Lastly, view your model from the top, straighten it up and delete any extra surfaces. Finally, I'm going to get rid of any floating bits of geometry. Using a select box, make a small selection on the main part of your model. Then go to Select, Select Linked, then Linked again. That will select all faces connected to my initial selection. 
Then if I go to select, invert, that will select these floating clumps of geometry that we don't want, so we hit delete. Now we are left with a fairly clean, pretty accurate representation of the house. As I said, I'm happy with the results from Meshroom. Mac users using Regard 3D might not get results as good as these, but it doesn't really matter. Center your house in the front orthographic view. Check in your output properties that your resolution is set to something sensible, ideally the resolution of your projector. Mine is 1920 by 1080. Then go to View, Viewport Render Image. Then go to Image, Save and save it out. Now we have an orthographic image of the house free of any perspective. Open After Effects. Import the image of your house you've just created in Blender. Drag the image onto this icon to create a new composition with the image automatically inside. I'll call this house mapping. Create a new solid and call it, say, left roof and give it a colour. I'll turn the opacity of the solid down. You can do this either by twirling down the layer properties or the quick way is by hitting T, which is the shortcut, and turning it down to zero temporarily so that we can see the house underneath. What we're going to do is mask sections of the house so that we can deal with them independently from other parts of the house. Now, how do you know which sections need to be split off from the rest of the house? For example, do we treat this as one big roof or do we treat the left and the right parts of the roof separately? The rule of thumb is that you map separately anything that doesn't exist on the same plane. What do I mean by that? So the right part of the house is slightly set back from the left part of the house. So we need to split them up and they get mapped separately. Now I'm going to go through the process of drawing a mask around the main part of the roof. You do this by having your solid layer selected and then selecting the pen tool and clicking out the points of the mask around the roof. I'm going to ignore the shapes that cut into the roof like the chimney and the dormer windows. You might need to make some judgment calls where it's not quite clear where the edges are or you think the model might be a bit wrong do your best, this isn't going to be perfect to the centimetre. When you're happy, start making more solids with masks for the other major parts of the house. You can quickly make a new solid by using the shortcut Command or Control Y, name it and give it a new colour. Then draw a mask around this next section. You can adjust these points at any time if you want to tweak the mask you've made. If you do go back and make an adjustment to a point and then you want to go back to drawing out the mask, make sure to activate the last mask point you made to continue where you left off. If you click and drag out when making a point, you get these bezier handles which allow you to make curves. For these window frames, which are rectangular, you can create a mask using the Rectangle tool. You can duplicate the mask by using Command or Control D 
and with the selection tool active, dragging the mask. You can marquee select the points of the mask to move them wholesale. You can also double click the selected points to scale them. For these cutout shapes on the porch, I want to set these masks to subtract. Now if I select all my solid layers and hit T to bring up the opacity for all of them, I can drag them up to 100 and I have myself a solid colour guide. This colour guide might be useful, these masks will certainly be useful later, but I also want to make a guide that contains simple outlines of all my shapes that I can design over easily. I'll duplicate one of these solids using Edit, Duplicate, or Command or Control D. Call it Outlines. So I already have the porch masks. Now I'll copy the masks from the other solids, first by revealing the masks using the shortcut M, selecting all of them by selecting one and then using Command or Control A, Then I'll copy and paste them onto my outlines layer. I'll do that for all the masks until they are all on one layer. Make sure the outline layer is selected. Then add the stroke effect by double clicking it. Check all masks and the paint style should be on transparent. You can give the lines a colour if you want. Now if I solo just our outlines layer, we have a simple line guide that we can design our animations over. Let me know, did you manage to create a photo scan of your house? Tell me in the comments and see you in the next tutorial.